This is a top of the range lithium polymer battery, which is commonly used in model aircraft and drones due to it being very lightweight and also having high performance. It has a maximum voltage of 16.8 volts and has a capacity of 1.8 amp hours, which essentially means it can deliver 1.8 amps for one hour. Now in reality, you never run these batteries down to 0% because they normally don't recover. Uh, you normally have to throw them away after that. So it's recommended that you only run them down about 80% of their overall capacity, which in this case would be 1.44 amp hours. So if I were to put this in a model aircraft and I wanted to fly for one hour, I would have to average uh, 1.44 amps consumption from that aircraft. Now there are lots of ways to increase the flight time of your aircraft, uh, which include gaining lots of altitude and gliding, or uh, slope soaring, or finding thermals to create more lift. However, in this video, I'm only going to take into consideration uh, powered flight. So the motor would have to draw 1.44 amps uh, constantly for an hour. Now 1.44 amps is quite a low amp draw for an aircraft that would carry a battery like this. So to get one hour flight time uh, might be quite difficult. Now as you've clicked on this video, you've probably heard of lithium ion batteries. Uh, they're commonly used in low power consumption products such as laptops. And usually in the case of laptops, they come in a cylindrical cell like this. Now this is called an 18650 cell. And it's called that because it's 18 millimeters diameter and it's 65 millimeters in length. Now why would anyone pick a lithium ion cell over a lithium polymer cell? Well, this small cell here contains three amp hours of energy. Now it only contains three amp hours of energy uh, at 4.2 volts. So I would need four of these in series to equal the same voltage as the lithium polymer battery. Now these brown cells are made by LG and they're the HG2 spec cells. Uh, they're supposedly capable of delivering 20 amps constant, which for model aircraft is pretty much needed if you need to gain some altitude quickly. There are other cells out on the market which have high capacity. Uh, I think there are some 3.4 amp hour cells, so an extra 0.4 amp hours. However, they're only capable of delivering, you know, 2 to 3 amps, a very small amount of amps. Now, as I said earlier, to fly for an hour, I should only consume less than 3 amps as it's three amp hours of capacity. Uh, however, that's an average value. So um, like for example, when I take off, I'll need to use a lot more amps uh, and to have a battery capable of delivering those amps is definitely required for a model aircraft. So why would anyone pick a lithium ion battery over a lithium polymer battery? Well, I guess that's why I'm making this video. So um, let's get on with making the battery. As with all batteries, these cells have a positive and a negative uh, polarity, which means to connect them in series, the positive has to be connected to the next negative and so on, uh, which means two of the batteries or two of the cells had to be flipped upside down uh, in order to get the right configuration. Now I know these cells aren't supposed to be soldered. The soldering iron apparently um, damages the cells from the heat. Uh, you're supposed to actually spot weld them However, over here in England, a spot welder is over £100, and I wasn't really willing to purchase one just to make a £20 battery. I used a 100 watt soldering iron uh, just to make sure that I could get a lot of heat into it really quickly uh, without it conducting through to the actual cell inside. Once the main power wires were soldered up, I had to solder on a balance lead, uh, which means that each cell can be individually uh, balanced uh, so that they're all at equal voltage. So the lithium ion battery pack is now finished. It is now a four cell battery, uh, four cells in series to equal the same voltage as this four cell lithium polymer battery. Uh, the difference between the two is the lithium polymer battery has 1.8 amp hours of capacity and the lithium ion battery has three amp hours of capacity. So an extra 30, 40% roughly uh, in capacity. So just before I built the lithium ion battery, uh, I asked the question, why pick lithium ion over lithium polymer? Uh, well, as far as I'm aware, I think lithium ions are slightly more energy dense per mass. So I'm going to stick the two batteries on my scales and we'll see what the weight difference is. So starting with the lithium polymer battery, it weighs 216.4 grams. I'll post the energy density per gram uh, just here on the screen. So 216.4 grams for the lithium polymer battery. 
Now these two batteries had the same energy density per mass. This battery should weigh about 360 grams. So let's stick it on the scales and find out. 202.2 grams. It's actually lighter than the lithium polymer battery. Uh, which I'm slightly surprised about, but also very, very impressed. I'll put the energy density per mass on the screen right here. So time for the flight test. As you can see, I have some uh, goggles on my forehead. Uh, these actually show a live video feed from the plane. Uh, and on this live video feed, uh, I can read off the voltage of the battery. Now my plan was to fly the plane with each battery and land the plane once the battery reaches 14.8 volts at a cruise speed. Now I'm going to skip quite a few bits because this, um, yeah, this gets quite boring. So time for the results. Lithium polymer battery, 41 and a half minutes. And for the lithium ion battery? 36 and a half minutes. Hang on a minute, wasn't that less than the lithium polymer battery? Lithium polymer battery, 41 and a half minutes. So what went wrong with this test? The lithium ion battery has a lot more capacity than the lithium polymer battery. So theoretically it should be able to fly for a lot longer. Now I landed the plane each time when the battery voltage reached 14.8 volts at a cruise speed. And this is important. Each battery will have a different internal resistance. So when it's put under load, uh, you know, a high amp draw, the voltage will uh, be reduced. Now because the lithium polymer battery is rated for a lot higher amp output, um, I assume the internal resistance is a lot lower, which means if you draw the same amount of amps from each battery, the voltage from the lithium polymer will stay up high, whereas the lithium ion voltage will drop a lot. And to confirm this, I actually stuck both of the batteries on my external battery charger afterwards, and the battery voltage of the lithium ion was 15.6 volts, and the lithium polymer was 15.2 volts. So the lithium polymer battery had actually been run down slightly more. But this still doesn't explain how I got an extra five minutes from the lithium polymer battery. So what I did is I left them on my charger to fully charge and measured the amount of amp hours that went back into each battery. The charger put in 1.11 amp hours into the lithium ion battery and 1.251 amp hours into the lithium polymer battery which if you work out per minute, works out at about 0.03 amp hours per minute of flight. Um, so you can actually reverse this whole equation and calculate theoretically how much flight time you could get when using 80% of the capacity of the battery. So if I reverse it, I get a value of 80 minutes theoretical flight time for the lithium ion battery and a theoretical flight time of 48 minutes for the lithium polymer. So how come the lithium polymer battery was only seven minutes away from reaching its theoretical maximum flight time, whereas the lithium, poly lithium ion battery was less than half the amount of flight time as I theoretically predicted? See, I did a bit more research into the lithium ion cells, especially these LG HG2 cells, and according to their specification sheet, these are capable of running down to 2 volts per cell, which would equate to 8 volts overall, rather than 14.8 volts. So it basically had another 6.8 volts, you know, that could be used. Whereas a lithium polymer battery, you don't normally run them lower than about 3.7 volts per cell. So basically, when I thought the lithium ion battery would have been dead at 14.8 volts, I still had a long way to go and uh, landing at 36 and a half minutes, I still had about 43 and a half minutes to go before I actually had to land. Now I probably could redo this test again, but I have to be honest, it was incredibly boring. Uh, flying for 35, 40 minutes at a time, around an open field, uh, just at cruise speed, you know, I'm not doing 
loops and rolls and stuff, it, it got incredibly boring. And especially as I was wearing these uh, FPV uh, goggles, um, it makes it slightly more interesting. But um, even so, uh, having these on your face for 40 minutes at a time um, really gets uncomfortable. So uh, I'd rather not redo this uh, test with the lithium ion battery flying for 80 minutes because I expect that would be yeah, unbelievably, unbelievably boring. So I hope this sort of wraps up this test. Uh, the lithium ion battery actually performed really well. Uh, maybe if I wanted more, you know, power consumption, you know, for doing fast passes or loops or aerobatics, uh, I'd probably pick the lithium polymer battery um, because it would still give quite a bit of flight time. Uh, whereas if I wanted to do long range flying or, you know, uh, if I wanted to do lots of gliding or something, I'd pick the lithium ion battery because not only does it allow almost 45% uh, extra flight time, uh, it's also lighter, which is an advantage if you're doing any sort of gliding. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching. A huge thanks to all of my new Patreons that have chosen to support me. Uh, as I mentioned in my previous video, I will be uploading all of the behind the scenes stuff uh, you know, upcoming projects and also my 3D printer STL files to my projects onto my Patreon account. Uh, you don't have to support me by much, just maybe $1 a month or so. Uh, really helps me out and you get access to extra stuff. And if you're new to my channel, please click subscribe. And if you like this video, leave a thumbs up. Thanks once again for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.